Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be doing something a little bit different. We're doing an unboxing. Just as a background, dermatologists, as part of the perks of the job, uh, we get lots of freebies. Everything from companies like uh, Galderma, Allergan, SkinCeuticals, uh, even um, The Ordinary. They give us stuff every week. So it's, you know, I guess as a dermatologist, when we're doing skin testing, we are basically basing it on our previous experience, personal experience, prescription patterns to patients, uh, as well as reading the latest articles, blogs, uh, news releases, going to conferences, going to meetings, uh, understand where the industry's at and where the industry is going. So as part of our perks, we get <laughs> like a skincare everywhere, yeah. Um, literally, uh, <laughs> just about every week, we can't go through every single um, product that we've, we're given, um, but at least we can start somewhere. So today, we're doing an unboxing. Um, I met the SkinCeuticals rep a couple of weeks ago, actually a couple of months ago now, pre-COVID, yeah? And we were talking about SkinCeuticals. Uh, in fact, uh, we interviewed the company uh, about in March this year um, and had a discussion in regards to their actives, where they're positioned in the market, uh, and I guess their involvement with L'Oreal. So, without further ado, it's an unboxing. Um, they said they're going to give me samples, lots of samples, over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months. So, um, let's go. Uh, it's not a flick knife, it's uh, yeah, one of these. But anyway, <laughs> let's do the unboxing, yeah. Uh, so, like I said, any given week, um, we get lots and lots of, um, lots and lots of goodies, yeah. And everything from everything from dermal fillers, Botox, um, even lasers, yeah. Um, but skincare, I guess, is the basis of derm. So we get so many samples. Uh, sometimes we don't know what to do with it. We can't actually try it on ourselves, yeah, because uh, I keep going on about, uh, I guess, the threshold of which we have. Just imagine me using three different forms of uh, retinol slash retinoids every week. Chances are I'm going to get a rash. So we're selective in what we want to review. We're selective in what we want to try. Um, and most of the time, the new stuff, um, I wouldn't say it's super exciting because we really like science rather than pseudoscience. The great thing with SkinCeuticals is that they, they base their, um, their company on, on science, on solid science. So let's see what I've got. I may have to stop and start the video sometimes because um, I know most of the ingredients, but if I get stuck, especially with RRP, recommended retail prices, I might have to look and see, yeah? But I'll put all the information down below uh, about the products, the recommended retail price, uh, and the little blurb about them, yeah? So what have we got? Uh, <laughs> nice paper. I'm sure you're paying a lot for this SkinCeuticals paper, yeah? Um, cool. What else have we got? Lots of packaging. <laughs> yeah. Bubble wrap. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, what have we got here? More bubble wrap. Most of the time, my staff open the uh, open the box, and I just get stuff on my desk here. Yeah, so forgive the clumsiness. Cool, nice box, skin cuticles. So I had a talk to their rep, like I said, a couple of months ago. We briefly talked about a few things, including their range of um, antioxidants, which I'm super keen in, uh, together with things like retinol, hyaluronic acid, the pigment correctors. Uh, and the sunscreen. So the basic uh, building blocks of what most dermatologists stock. Yeah, so let's have a look what's in the box. Uh, really nice box, actually. <laughs> this magnetic. As per SkinCeuticals, you've got lots of branding. <laughs> cool. And, um, yep. Got a brochure here. So let's flip through that quickly. It's a whole heap of um, industry jargon and a lot of marketing. So look, I'll read that possibly some some other time. Yeah. That's it. Okay. More packaging. Ah, cool. So we've got three products, three products to review today. Uh, we've got these guys. Yeah. 
first thing is their retinol 0.5. Second thing is their true tested CE ferulic acid, which is probably the industry standard for antioxidants. I'm not too sure about this one. It's HA intensifier. I remember reading about this, but HA intensifier. So let's go through things uh, first. Let's talk about let's talk about the CE ferulic acid first, yeah, because I think this is it's well known by dermatologists that uh, this particular, I guess, formulation is one of the better ones when it comes to antioxidants. So there's lots of papers in regards to CE ferulic acid. CE ferulic acid stands for C vitamin C, E, which is, is your tocopherol, together with your ferulic acid. And basically, they're combining three antioxidants in one. So let's open this. Let's see how it goes. Um, I know this is super expensive, yeah, but the flip side is you only use a few drops. So, oh, have they given me, they've probably given me a sample size, yeah. Yep, I think so, it's 15 mils. I think the um, the proper size is 30 mils. So when we read about this, it's prevention. So they've got prevention, correction, um, and I guess it's nice to have a, uh, <laughs> I'm really gummy in regards to opening this, <laughs> in regards to have these uh, different lines. So see you for a look acid, I'll read it out to you, high potency, Triple antioxidant treatment, so the concentrations are as follows. 15% L-ascorbic acid, which is the highest, highest bioavailability of ascorbic acid. Uh, it's also got 1% alpha uh, tocopherol, which is your vitamin E. And it's also got 0.5% uh, ferulic acid. So, let's go through this, yeah. <laughs> it's my first time actually... Uh, looking at this. So this is, it looks like a 15 mil uh, preparation. Okay, cool. So bottle dropper. Before I go into formulation, let's talk briefly about about this, um, about the science behind uh, antioxidants in C for acid. So of all the antioxidants out there, I think this has got the most amount of papers, uh, as in scientific papers. The idea behind antioxidants is to actually prevent cellular DNA damage from UV induced uh, uh, radiation and also environmental factors. So when we talk about antioxidants, generally speaking, there's the big three, yeah, which is your uh, vitamin C, l ascorbic acid, your vitamin E, and also your ferulic acid. Many other antioxidants out there, including things like green tea and all, but these are the ones that probably got the highest amount of um, data behind them. So guidelines for this from what i remember is like three to four drops in the morning because you want to use it in the morning not at night you want to prevent uv induced um, stress and oxidation into your cells and hence you should use that preventative in fact from what i understand the company actually advises you you to put this on before sunscreen so half an hour before sunscreen first thing in the morning and from what i remember as well it's three to four drops or three to five drops everywhere from your exposed areas yeah face neck decolletage or chest area um, so the whole idea is that the vitamin c let's go through a few things the vitamin c uh, can come as different forms l ascorbic acid is probably the one that has the highest bioavailability the downside and i keep going on, on, on about this with high bioavailability vitamin c's is that most of the formulations are a ph of 2.5 to 3.5 which means they're acidic so a word of warning for this if you do have any redness burning stinging irritation you have to use less if you have rosacea if you have sensitive skin uh, chances are you might react. So just be very careful. Instead of using, for example, three to five drops, you might not use two drops, test patch the area and go from there. So the vitamin C is a free radical scavenger. So it stabilizes formulations, but it also um, scavenges, um, anti so it's an antioxidant, it scavenges free radicals, which prevent or reduces your DNA damage, right? And vitamin C, apart from an antioxidant, a stabilizer, it also helps with pigmentation because it can uh, decrease your tyrosinase enzyme, which increases uh, pigment. So it's a tyrosinase inhibitor, it's a weak tyrosinase inhibitor. Uh, importantly as well, at higher concentrations, once it goes into a dermis, it can actually stimulate collagen. So that's why vitamin C is pretty good, yeah. Uh, but like I said, it comes with an acidic warning. Vitamin E, um, in this situation, it's your... Um, 1% alpha tocopherol is your vitamin E. Vitamin E is pretty benign, so you can buy that from you know, a lot of creams, and generally speaking, patients with sensitive skin, that's not an issue. 
And ferulic acid is one of the most powerful antioxidants. So combining it all three, I guess, makes sense, yeah? So let's have a look at this formulation. Like I said, I've never used it before, have I? Maybe I've tried it in one of the trade shows. Yeah, it smells funky. <laughs> okay, at least it hasn't got a nice citrusy smell, which is what dermatologists hate because that can increase photosensitivity. So look, you are only putting on a drop. So a tiny, tiny drop. And you're using one, two, three, four. So this is the recommended four tiny drops for your face um, and neck. So I'm just going to trial a tiny, tiny bit to, I guess, test the formulations. It's not scientific. This is <laughs> obviously this is um, subjective, not objective. You can see that this actual serum goes a long way. Yeah, it spreads really easily. Um, the smell is kind of benign, but <laughs> it's kind of weird. But it's not citrusy, it's not fragrancy, which is what we like as dermatologists. <clears throat> the recommended um, application, four to five drops, you can see will actually last you a fair bit. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not flogging this. Um, now, I'm not trying to sell this, but if you're looking at, I think in Australia it's $210, yeah? $210 for a bottle. I think it comes as a 30 mil bottle, which is, and this is a 15, so I presume this is a trial size, double that. Uh, and you're paying about $210. Uh, US wise, probably 140, 150 US dollars. Um, industry tells me that one normal size bottle lasts any, anywhere between uh, six to nine months. So you make your decision based upon that. You know, you're paying that amount to um, protect your skin for a period of six to nine months. Probably equal, equals less than, I don't know, maybe a cup of coffee every second day. So on that basis, you make your decision based upon that, yeah? But lots of other, I guess, good products out there. Uh, you don't have to buy SkinCeuticals, but like I said, the most amount of research has been done with this. Uh, and many dermatologists I know personally, many dermatologists I know actually use this. Yes, we do get given stuff, but we get given a lot of stuff, which means we're very selective on what we choose to use. Um, maybe it's saying something about this particular formulation. Okay, so let's go through, what else have we got? Um, retinol. So the retinol is a 0.5% uh, concentration. From what I understand, um, with SkinCeuticals, they've got three different concentrations, ranging from 0 0.3, 0 0.5, midway, all the way to 1.0. Uh, makes sense, yeah? Because if you have a retinol in one concentration in the skincare range, chances are it's not going to be great because... Uh, you're gonna have some irritation for patients who have, have sensitive skin. So once again, word of warning with retinol, anyone with sensitive skin, so things like eczema, uh, atopic dermatitis, seb dermatitis, rosacea, general skin sensitivities, even acne, um, as in broken acne, as in papular pustular acne and comedomal acne, just be very careful that um, about what you're using. If in doubt, test patch it. Um, what I'll say, and I've said this to in, in other videos, where you can save some money with any retinol, you buy the higher concentration one. So for example, if you're gonna, if you're gonna buy a retinol, you may wanna start something like the 1.0, even 0 0.5, knowing that you can dilute it. So you may wanna buy something like the 1.0, knowing you can dilute it into thirds, and that equals a 0 0.3 or 0 0.33, or dilute into half, half a pea size, half a pea size, and that way you get a dilution of 0 0.5. And when you can tolerate that, you decrease the dilution of your benign cream, benign moisturizer, and hence you get a 1.0. But the big, the jump that you, you pay from a 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 to 1.0 is not triple nor double what a 1.0 is. So just a trick out there for the industry, yeah? Now let's have a look at this. Retinol, as you know, most dermatologists prescribe that vitamin A. Um, we like using that as as a um, as a treatment, but also as a preventative, uh, retinol does many good things. It helps correct um, it helps correct pigment, uh, pigment fine lines, wrinkles, textural change, normalizes oil production, um, also decreases in high concentration p acne on your skin, which is antibacterial, um, and it also normalizes your follicular uh, shedding, which means you decrease the amount of blackheads as well as whiteheads. 
So retinol is super important. Uh, retinol also is an, is an antioxidant as well, yeah? But it also helps uh, generate collagens. The problem being with uh, retinol, it needs a conversion between retinol to retinoic acid. So not as potent compared to your uh, prescription retinoids, but still it has a uh, very useful role. The problem being, like last week we talked about uh, prescription retinoids. Problem being with that is that um, they will cause irritation, some form of skin irritation at some time. Whilst retinol needs to be converted, but the flip side is that it's gentler on your skin. So let's have a look at this formulation. So this formulation is 0.5 pure retinol. Directions are this. Um, once daily, it should be in the evening, yeah, in the evening, four to five drops to a dry face. <laughs> I need my glasses. So uh, let's have a look at the formulation. Seal, so let's break the seal. Oh, man, seal very well. Trusty Tento does the job. Okay, let's have a look at this. So. Uh, I'm gonna put it on this hand now, yeah, because that one smells of CE ferulic acid. So, this is the formulation, guys. It's a cream. Um, first thing, in fact, <laughs> when you look at dermatologists, the first thing we do when we when we put cream on, in fact, I think most people do it that way, yes? Yeah? So when we first get a dollop of whatever, straight to the nose. Reason being is that uh, if you're not a dermatologist, the sense of smell is very good. Um, that may evoke a trigger for you to buy the actual product itself. For us derms, the opposite. So if we smell, if it smells fragrancy, if it smells citrusy, um, if it smells woody, basically we go, that's crap. Because we know that the higher the concentration of fragrance, uh, the higher the contact dermatitis rate. So it's very important when you're buying products, try your best not to get uh, fragrance, especially in patients with impaired skin barrier because that can lead to an allergic contact dermatitis and then you're in trouble. So with this, it's actually very benign. So it doesn't smell at all. It goes on very nicely, a couple of strokes, it's done, yeah. The formulation, and this is what I keep going on about with different formulations. I'm gonna wash this off because it's still daylight now and I don't wanna get photosensitive. sensitive. Um, so when it comes to formulations, you, you basically pay not only for the active ingredients, the active ingredients sometimes are, are super cheap. When we're looking at um, uh, retinol, retinoic acid, this ingredient is very cheap compared to, for example, uh, ferulic acid. We know that skincare ingredients are very expensive. That's why you see a lot of skincare companies, especially entry-level skincare companies, that can use or afford to use lots of, of um, retinol because it's actually quite cheap to manufacture. What you're paying for apart from <laughs> fancy packaging, uh, what you're paying for is basically formulation, which is how nicely it goes in your, on your face, yeah? And that is obviously subjective, uh, but same with skincare, yeah? Unless you have actually data, a lot of skincare is, um, it's a luxury item, yeah. Uh, but certainly there are actives, like we go on and on about the ABCs and your skincare acids, they do have proven science behind them. So with this, um, yeah, I'd rate it pretty highly, yeah. It's, it's, it's very nice, um, and yeah. I think the recommended retail, um, just checking it here, $110 for 30 mils, uh, which is a little bit pricey. I mean, considering you can buy the ordinary for something like, what's that, uh, a fifth the value, in fact, probably less, <laughs> nearly 10% of this, you can get the ordinary. Inky list is a little bit more expensive. Uh, when we're comparing medium to high, uh, a baji, for example, you're probably paying about $80, $90. So this is another 30, 40% on top of that. By far, the not, not the most expensive retinol on the market, but still uh, it's up there. So you make your decision based upon, I guess, your um, feel for this and how you rate it subjectively. Um, but the, certainly the science is there. Finally, um, Jesus, nearly 20 minutes. <laughs> I haven't done this unboxing video before. Uh, you've got an HA intensifier. This one I've got to read up a little bit about um, because it's not, it's not something which I've used before. So once again, brilliant packaging as per SkinCeuticals. Um, let's have a look what's, what's, what's in this, yeah? 
So HAs, as we know, hyaluronic acid, they sit on your skin. The molecule's too large to go uh, through your basement membrane. And hence, even though they say, ooh, these are a little bit different. Have a look at that. <laughs> so these are little, little ampules, yeah? Um, might give these out to some of the patients to try tomorrow or the day after. But yeah, so we're talking about hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is a ubiquitous building block in your skin, in your dermis. Everyone's got hyaluronic acid. It's also found in your joints, uh, very important. Now, hyaluronic acid uh, decreases with time, decreases with sun damage, um, and hence the use of dermal fillers. So I always keep saying, HA belongs under your skin, not on your skin. So if it's under your skin, you can't use any topical to put it under your skin. Yeah, it just does not go through your basement membrane. Even low molecular weight, small molecules will not go through. So the only way to actually put this under your skin in your dermis is either through dermal fillers or high pressure injections, yeah? Uh, dermal fillers are preferred because it's more reliable. Now, um, hyaluronic acid, th there's a catch, yeah? It acts as a humectant, yeah? So it decreases um, water loss, transepidermal water loss in your epidermis, and hence it can make your epidermis more hydrated. That's why when you put this on, uh, you don't get an amazing uh, reduction in wrinkles because it generates collagen. You actually get a reduction in wrinkles because it hydrates the top part of your skin. Hence, that's why um, it works possibly in two or three days. Flip side is that Vaseline can do the same thing because it reduces transepidermal water loss. Anything which is as occlusive as that, uh, you're going to get some benefit. But the flip side, obviously, this feels nicer than Vaseline. So... Hyaluronic acid, um, this is a humectant. This reduces water loss. It improves hydration. Ah, the other thing I keep going on about with this, uh, if you apply this prior to, for example, uh, a retinol, yeah, you can potentially increase the bioavailability of the retinol because what happens is that you increase your uh, hydration of your epidermis. And how this gets absorbed into the dermal layers is that it's got to go through the water layers uh, of your epidermis, the bricks and mortar, uh, to the actual basement membrane, then it goes through that. So by using this half an hour before this, it can potentially increase the uh, potency of uh, your skincare active, whether it be the ABCs or what have you. So let's try this on. Um, the other thing I remember reading with this, it contains licorice. Uh, which is kind of weird because is it licorice? Yeah, two percent licorice root. So I'm just going to put it here, away from the CE ferulic acid. I'll show you what it, what it's like. Yeah, so it's it's a almost milky, cloudy drop. Yeah, and it's serum-y in formulation. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> it's kind of serum-y. Cool. What was I on about? Oh, licorice root. Yeah, so licorice root. <laughs> licorice has been used by uh, derms and, and I guess skincare professionals for a couple of decades now. Uh, and licorice actually uh, decreases pigmentation. Yeah, so it's, it, licorice is a uh, potent, I wouldn't say super potent, but still it reduces tyrosinase uh, activity. So it's a tyrosinase inhibitor. That's why when you look at uh, skincare products like Meloderm, Melorase, Melocream, Lytera, a lot of the botanical uh, pigment inhibitors, they do contain licorice slash licorice root. So licorice is also anti-inflammatory, uh, hence it makes sense with hyaluronic acid. But I guess it's weird to have both of them in a combination, especially as a moisturizer. But I presume people who want to have, um, I guess, uh, nice skin probably wants to have um, brighter skin uh, and better texture yeah and it just makes sense if we're going to reduce the actual pigmentation or the um, yeah the actual melanocyte activity we're going to have better cream better cream better skin so with this once again it's actually very benign smelling yeah so it hasn't got any fragrances it hasn't got any additives um, it's pretty good the only thing I would the only comment I would make is for me, it feels a little bit sticky. Um, I probably want something more occlusive. Uh, well, I mean, I want something lighter, but not st as sticky as this. Having said that, I've tried other products on this finger, so let's not make that decision. Maybe you can go, I'll leave it up to you, but maybe have a try of this. Um, go to your 
store, department store, see whether you like it. Uh, I don't know. Hey, uh, out of all these products, this is probably the least of my favorite, just from a science point of view, because I know a moisturizer can do the same. Um, I like the formulation of the others. When we're looking at the recommended retail price for this, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, you're paying 142 bucks for 30 mils. Um, I, if I had that kind of money to spend in the SkinCeutical range, I probably would use the retinol first. Yeah, um, probably a 1.0 and dilute it down. Um, but look, hope you hope you guys enjoy that. It's only three products. I can go on for another half an hour and waffle on, but I won't. Um, it's a first unboxing video. I hope you like this kind of format, yeah, because this is super easy for me to do. All I do is just wait for the products to come in, maybe do some light reading uh, a day or two before just to check the recommended retail prices. And um, yeah, go from cold, yeah, because that way I have no idea what these formulations feel like. Um, so it gives you an unbiased opinion. But once again, unbiased opinion that's subjective. You may have a different opinion on these. Guys, I hope you liked that video. Please comment, like, share. Um, I do one video every week. I'll probably do more of these unboxing videos because I think they're quite therapeutic, um, possibly a bit educational. Uh, more on my Instagram account uh, if you want to know more about skincare. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.